Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. In this video, we're looking at coloured snow foams and trying to answer the question of whether or not these products are safe to use on your cars. Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing channel, guys. Good to see you. So today we're covering the subject of um, coloured snow foams. Now, I've said before on the channel that kind of thick snow foam pre-washes draw a lot of people into detailing. They almost, when you see a picture of a car being covered in snow foam, it almost flicks a little switch in our brain that kind of makes us think that that process is deep cleaning our car. Um, you know, beyond how we were cleaning it before. And really, the, the, most of the pH neutral kind of foaming pre-washes that you get are actually kind of very mild forms of cleaning that are there as just an extra kind of precautionary step rather than a deep cleaning contactless wash step um, to help remove some of that kind of dirt and debris before you go in and make contact. Um, with your car and if you have very good standard of paintwork on your car then pre-washing is important and something that you probably virtually everybody is doing and you want to consider doing so as well as all these traditional snow foaming products now you have a whole range of these colored snow foams that can be in red that come out pink typically um, you can get purple ones blue ones green ones yellow ones i believe so you can pick the color you like and um, when you're pre-washing your car, you get to have a different color on the car. And the primary reason for doing that, a lot of, the, a lot of the, them advertise, is that it's just fun and cool to have a different color, which is fair enough. So what I've done in this video, guys, is simply take one of these products, a red one, um, and I've looked at its ability to stain on paintwork. So I've used it on a test panel and let it dry. I've used it on my car at different concentrations and let the snow foam dry as well in certain places. It's very hot at the moment, as we know in the UK, so it's a, it's a bad time to kind of be pre-washing and leaving things to dry. And also, I have used them on um, a test piece of white leather at different concentrations. Now, you might think, why are you testing on leather? They're there to pre-wash the outside of cars. So the reason I've tested this on leather, even though it's inside the car, is that from pre-washing cars for quite a while now, every now and then there is a risk of water getting inside or ingressing, to make it even sound more technical, ingressing into the cockpit and falling onto whatever's in the cockpit. So the, the thing there that we're obviously worried about is it falling onto nice leather. So I've got some white test leather, which is ideal for testing staining. Um, now, water getting inside the cars isn't, isn't normal, like I say, but on older cars, coupes, T-bars or rag tops where the windows aren't going into a frame around the door and are going into the top sort of roof if you like, quite often there can be problems with those cars not, not quite sealing properly and sometimes, especially with the pressure washer and blasting it, you can get some product going in there. As it's happened to me a few times, not for years actually, but it used to happen on the, on the old GTV coupes that I used to have and it was a bit of a problem. I could never quite get that seal right. Um, so I thought I'd test worst case scenario that it does get into the car, it does fall on leather, white leather, and it is allowed to dry on that leather and we're looking at different concentrations for the staining. Um, so that was that particular test. So let's just run through the test of these results, guys, and what we've done. So, so first up, we use this particular product, and this product is designed to, or developed to be used at 20 to 1, so roughly 50 milliliters of this red dye product to a liter of, um, of water. At that ratio, the product was not very pink. It was, it was like a very mild milkshake, and when it goes out in the panel, you can see the pinkness, but as it starts to thin and run down, it sort of turns whiter. Um, and I let the product dry on certain parts of the car, um, and I had absolutely no problems with staining anywhere on the car, even in the engine bay kind of runoffs, even in the door shuts where the product can sort of sit for a bit and there was some sort of pinky water in there. It all just rinsed off um, and there was no staining at all on the Golf. I upped the concentration of the product to 10 to 1, which made it a little bit kind of redder, um, a little bit more 
um, pinky, but it didn't make that much difference. It was a bit thicker actually. It's probably more like I was expecting the snow foam product to be. And again, um, on the Golf had no problems at all with staining even after the product dried. So I'm thinking, okay, well, it's past those two tests. I just stuck it straight into the snow foam lance, completely neat, sprayed it out into the car. Still pink, but now using it neat, it actually looked quite blingy, like how I'd have expected it to look, quite a solid pink, you know, not that anyone would want that color, it's a free wash, but there you go. Um, very thick, nice and pink, let it dry, rinsed it off, um, and no problems and no staining as well on the car. None of it got onto the interior of my car, but like I said, lots of it was getting into all the runoff areas and sitting on the scuttle and all, all that sort of stuff, and uh, left it for at least 10 minutes out there, um, and no problems, so absolutely fine on that front. Again, on the small little silver test panel I had, I laid the product out at 20 to one, and let it bake on the panel for an hour, and so it's absolutely bone dry, and all that product has completely baked onto the panel. Um, I, I'll overlay the shots of what it looked like, but after it dried, you could just see some areas that look, looked a little bit pinky. Just rest, rinsed it with loose pressure with the hose, and it all came off, so that dye is kind of, seems like it's water soluble, so if it's not penetrating, it's not gonna penetrate into that clear coat. It should just rinse off with it. And the final test, guys, the white strip of leather with three different concentrations. This is a, this side here, this test area, was done at 1 to 20 in the bottle and then sprayed out through the pressure washer and the lance into a bucket. So I'm getting the real, the real life concentration, if you like, the panel impact ratio, as they called it. So it wasn't at 1 to 20, it was used at 1 to 20, if you get where I'm going. Put the product out on there, let it dry. Same with 1 to 10 put that ratio in the lance, spray down to the bucket, put some on there, let it dry, and then this final section on the right hand side, neat product, not put into the lance and sprayed out, just using neat product and um, putting that straight onto the leather. What were the results? And, and I left this dry for a good, probably somewhere between half an hour and an hour, and it was bum dry out in the sun, so, um, you know, it's gonna have done its, done its thing then. First off, at the one to 20 PIR, um, there was, before I wiped it, there was obviously a little bit of kind of discoloration, some pink there, not a lot. And I just used a microfiber cloth with water and all of the product wiped off of that particular area. So at, at its recommended usage ratio, it did not, as far as I can see, stain white leather. At one to 10, the same test, there's just a little area on the um, piece of leather where I think it kind of ran a bit and pulled and there was a so a bit more of a concentration of it there where it dried and I can't get it off um, and that's with um, microfiber and water primarily when I was wiping it there but I've also tried leather cleaners as well so it's stained that little particular area a tiny area and it's not too bad but I can't can't get it off even if I use a brush or anything like that so it's stained um, and then there, therefore no surprises when you use the product neat it stained the leather quite badly and um, I can't get that off, but you would obviously not be using this product neat. So um, that's a result of that particular leather testing. And now I wanna go on to the kind of overall conclusions of this video. Right, so the overall conclusions on colored snow foams. Let's start with the positives. So with the product that I tested here, at, at its recommended usage ratio of one to 20 in the lance, there were no issues with staining on any of the surfaces that I tested it on. The car, the test panel where I baked it on, and the white leather, which is most important. And the fact that it didn't stain the white leather is actually kind of quite impressive, because I thought it would have done. Is it possible that it has stained it? It's just I can't see it with my eyeballs. Maybe, but um, if I can't see it, then I'm not too worried about it, and I really let it dry. So it's passed that test without, um, without over-complicating it. Um, I've got up here um, at one to 10 as well. It, it didn't stain the leather quite as badly as I thought it did, but where there was a little concentrated patch, that has stained and I can't get it out. But still, I was quite impressed with it. I thought it was gonna stain at one to 10, so I put that as a positive. Um, another positive, there was no staining issues on the driveway, so all of this testing I've done, I've actually gone through three quarters of the bottle playing around with it on the car. I'm using it neat on the car and um, 
when it's dried on the driveway, there's no like staining on the bricks or anything like that, which is quite nice that I can see anyway. Um, like I say, even when used neat. As I mentioned before, no staining on the test panel even after letting it bake dry and no staining that I can find on the Golf. Um, what other positives are there to using these products? Well, there's the two that are kind of advertised. One that it's good fun. So if you like, if you just want some fun and you, you like the idea of having a pre-washer which is a different color, um, then you've got that as a positive. And the other positive that is perhaps the foam is easier to see, although with this particular product um, at its recommended usage ratio, it wasn't, it, it was quite, when it thinned out, it was quite close to white. So it was a very small positive. But you could perhaps argue that with other products and other colors, you might be able to see the foam better, which will help you kind of get it all over the car. Pretty small thing, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a balanced review here so that you'd list that as a positive rather than a negative, unless perhaps you're using like a, a pink one on a pink car where it might be harder to spot or whatever, but uh, there you go, we're maybe going a little bit too far into it there. Next, I wanna go on to the negatives. Um, so first of all, two negatives around the leather. At one to 10, it does have the ability to stain. Um, so that perhaps suggests that you need to be careful when you use this, if you're using it day in, day out on cars, like I said, and it can get into the cockpit. At one to 10, you're getting towards that area where there is a little bit of a risk of staining, at least from what I've seen here. And, and neat, it stains. So you wanna be careful because you might get the product on your fingertips, which is something we're gonna talk about in a second, and then touch something on the car inside that might put leather on it. So it's a pretty minor negative, but it's still something to consider. Um, but the biggest negative with this particular colored snow foam for me, and I didn't even think of this before I shot this video, it's, it's from shooting it, is that you've got to obviously decant these snow foams. And even with, a, even with a little funnel when I'm pouring it in, just the little drops that come out at the end on the funnel and fall onto the work surfaces and runs down the side of the bottle, it is messy. If you get it on your hands, your hands go pink and it's quite hard to get off. Um, you know, someone will say, well, you should be wearing gloves. Well, I, I don't always wear gloves. And even if it did, I'd get them on my gloves and then I could touch things with them. It's just a messy product. and You do not want to be getting it on your work surfaces and stuff and, and uh, letting it dry when it's neat. And it's quite strong at that neat concentration. So um, that's the biggest n negative to me, for me. Tied in with all that, all of the things that you use it in, when you use it with your snow foam lance, I've washed this out now, it's just kind of stained the lance a little bit and um, not the end of the world, but on my buckets as well that I was filling it in have gone a bit pink around the edges and stuff. Um, you know, where you use this, it can, it can be a little bit messy and that was the biggest negative for me. Um, that was the only one. I've covered the fact that it can potentially stain leather at higher concentrations than you'd use it at. Um, you probably wouldn't use this product on any car that's got fabric so kind of rag tops is what i'm trying to say you wouldn't use these colored snow foams on them uh, even if you had you know 99 percent of rag tops will have black um black kind of colored um roofs you know but you still wouldn't use a product at least in my head with dye in it on any car that's got kind of fabric roof or anything like that because of because of the fact that it will penetrate and the dye is likely to stay in there. You know, on a lighter coloured fabric, which is very not very common, but you, that you could have a problem. So be careful with that. And my advice is don't use them on rag tops. So final conclusions, guys, on these coloured snow foams. Would you see me using them? No, you wouldn't. Um, just for the reasons that I've covered in this video. I don't hate them or anything like that, but there is a small risk around staining from what I've seen. No risk if you use them as intended, but a small risk, mainly around spillage for me and getting it on your hands and touching things and getting it on your work surfaces and staining all your equipment and stuff like that that, that bugged me. Um, so it's important to point out that it that used as intended, that it has been safe in this video, which is fine. I think that's gonna be the experience of people that use them, that they've probably never had a staining issue unless you, you misuse them. Maybe it's possible though, um, like I say, the more you up that concentration, perhaps the risks go, but then you'd have to also, you know, the product will also have to ingress. So you'd be unlucky for something to go wrong, but it is possible. And that's one reason I won't use them. Um, 
but like I said, the main reason is, you know, it could be pink, yellow, blue, whatever. I just, I, I'm not bothered about the colour of it at all. And I think most people will feel that way. Um, but let me know, there's lots of these products on the market. You know, you could talk about the type of dyes used and some dyes being friendly and others and all that sort of stuff. Um, so maybe there's better ones that are even more easier to break down and there's no risk of staining. I don't know, this is just one product that I've used. Um, let me know if you use them, guys, what your reason is, if you've got any particular colour you like, and let me know your thoughts on them. You know, when I was planning doing this video, I wasn't too keen on these, and I thought it's going to be a really negative one. And I realised from shooting it, it hasn't been that big a deal, but, but yeah, the overall message for me is they are just a bit messy, and uh, I don't really see the point of them. So that, that's just how I feel about them, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching, and as I say, put your comments in the channel on what you think of them. What else is going on? Well, all this microfiber, I've got, I've always had loads of samples of all of the stuff from the rag company. So I've just been digging out all my samples to go through and re-familiarize myself with the, the range. We have got um, Levi and Anthony coming over from the rag company this week. I've got to go and pick them up at the airport, should be fun. Can't, can't wait to meet them, so that'll be brilliant. And we're going to do shoot a couple of videos on sort of, we're going to go through some of the rag company um, microfiber towels and try and pick out some of their kind of you know their flagship towels which you might want to take a look at if you're not familiar with these kind of products we're also probably going to do some other videos on microfiber and the different formats of microfiber and what you might want to use for different types of detailing jobs and anything else i can think of that's going to be fun so that's all to come on the forensics detailing channel i will see you soon guys um take care and uh, that's all from me